Welcome back. Today we're looking at operations on numbers and calculation skills. It's very important that you know how to operate your calculator and it's very, very important that you always have your calculator on your desk for Mathslet. Properties of addition and multiplication. So if I look at these two rows of numbers or rows of values, you can see that all I've done I've changed the order around. So what happens if I add those numbers together? Well, in that row, I would get 106 Rand 39. In this row, I would also get 106 39. So the conclusion, it doesn't matter in which order I add, the result is the same. Changing the order of operations results in the same answer. Well, let's see what happens when we multiply. Seven threes are 21. 21 multiplied by 2 is 42. Three twos are 6. Six sevens are 42. So once again, my answer is the same. So changing the order of operations results in the same answer once again. So when multiplying and adding rows or lists of numbers, you are able to change the order in which you add or the order in which you multiply without changing the final result. Let's see what happens when we subtract. Well, I have 25 Rand, I spend 10 Rand, I have 15 Rand left. If I have 10 Rand and I need to buy something for 25 Rand, I definitely don't have enough money I have 15 Rand too little or 15, I'm 15 Rand short. So from this you can see by changing the order here, the answer changes. So when I subtract, I cannot change the order of operations as it results in a different answer. If I look at division, 25 Rand divided by 5 will give me 5 Rand. If I have 5 divided by 25 Rand, my result is 20 cents. So once again, you can see my answers here are not the same, although my numbers I've used are the same, but changing the order of operations will result in a different answer. Estimation. Estimation is just an educated guess. You need to know how much more or less your final answer would be. You do, you use this skill often, especially when you're at the shops, you go shopping and you need to know whether the money in your purse will cover the items that you've selected to buy. The last thing you want to happen is to get to the till and then you can't pay for your purchases. First of all, go to page 18, example one, change tomatoes to potatoes. Right, the cost is 7 Rand 99 per kilo. What we do when we estimate, it is an, a calculated or educated guess, we are going to say, right, 7.99 is very close to 8 Rand. In fact, we don't even get 1 cent coins anymore. So Nunkosi is in the shop. She wants to buy 5 kilograms of tomatoes or potatoes and they cost 8 Rand per kilo, so what is she going to do? Well, in her head she says 5 multiplied by 8 Rand will give you 40 Rand. So she knows that she must have 40 Rand in her purse to buy that item. She also knows, because I rounded up, that she will have enough money. In fact, it will cost her just under 40 Rand. Applying operations in the correct order. We all know about bod mass, brackets, powers, roots, or of. Divide or multiply in order from left to right. Add and subtract in order from left to right. But in this example we're looking at, you can see brackets have already been inserted for you. Let's just first have a look what each of the following represents. From grade 9 you would remember that this was a compound interest formula. That was your principal amount. The amount you started with was probably a thousand rand, or it was a thousand rand in this case. The 5 over 100 is the fraction 
that was the interest rate and 3 was the, to the power of 3. Now we're not looking at formulas, we're just going to look at how we would go about solving this problem. So now we're going to do the calculation. Well, if we go to bod mass, we must do brackets first. So I'm going to do the calculation inside the bracket. And that is 1 plus 5 over 100 will give you 1,05. After you have done that, we now have to go to the powers, roots, or of. In this case, 3 is to the power 3. So I'm going to take my answer from the previous step. I'm going to raise it to the power 3 and my answer will be 1,157625. The next thing I do is multiply and or divide. And this clearly means multiply. So what we're going to do, you're going to take 1,000, you're going to multiply it by your previous answer, and your answer now is 1,157,625. Using brackets, if you go back to approach 2 on page 4, you had to explain when you would use or insert brackets. We insert brackets just to help us when we're doing our calculations using the, the laws of bod mass. So if there are no brackets or of, I would go and look for multiplication and or division, put brackets around those two, calculate and then after I've done those calculations I would then go and look for addition and subtraction put brackets around those calculations and then I would do the, op the calculations on that. Square numbers. 1 is the first square number because 1 times 1 is 1 or 1 squared. I have 1 across and 1 up, so 1 by 1 is 1. Our next square number is 2, because I have 2 blocks across and 2 blocks high. So my square number is 2 by 2, which gives me 4. The third square number, 3 blocks along, 3 blocks high, so that will be 3 multiplied by 3, which is 9. If I count all those blocks, you will see I have nine blocks. My fourth square number, I have four blocks by four blocks. Or I can say four rows by four columns. So four multiplied by four is 16. So that is my fourth square number. It is important that you know the following square numbers. 1 to 13. That will greatly assist you. This is 1 to the power of 2. 2 to the power of 2, 3 to the power of 3, 4 to the power of 2, and those are your square numbers. If I look at square and cube roots, so the inverse operation of squaring is square rooting. So from the previous example, we saw that two blocks by two blocks would give you four. So the square root of four is two. So what we are actually saying when we are square rooting is if I gave you four blocks, how many blocks would make one side? Either that side or that side or that side or that side. So when we square root, we want to know the length of the side. The inverse operation of cubing is cube rooting. So let's have a look here. 3 cubed meant that I had 3 blocks long, 3 blocks wide and 3 blocks high. If I had 27 blocks, little blocks, I could make a cube which is 3 by 3 by 3. The cube root of 27 is 3. So in other words, we are saying here are 27 blocks. How long would one side be? 
powers and roots. Cubes, how many blocks in the cube? Well, there are 3 by 3 by 3, 27. How long is each side? Well, all the sides are the same length. Each side is 3. I want you now to use this information to explain the cube of a number and the cube root of a number. The cube of a number is if you take a number and multiply it by itself three times. The cube of a number, the cube root of a number, is if you have a cube number, for example, 1, 8, 27, 64. So it's like saying you had 64 blocks. Take those 64 blocks and make a perfect cube. Well, you would have to make a perfect cube with four blocks along the one side, four blocks along the other side, and four blocks high. So the cube root of 64 would be 4. When we multiply by 10, 100, and 1,000, we can do this in our heads. 42 multiplied by 10, my number's getting bigger. 10 has got one zero, so all I've done is I've added another zero to the end of the number. 42 times 100, I take 42 and I add two zeros because a hundred has got two zeros. 42 times a thousand, I write 42. I add three zeros to the end of the number to get 42,000. What happens if I have decimal fractions? Well, the same thing is going to happen. 10 has one zero, so my comma is going to move one place to the right. It is 10 times bigger, so I get 36,9. If I multiply by 100, the comma is going to move two places to the right. It's not actually the comma that moves, the digits all move. If I multiply by 1,000, it means my digits are all going to move up three places, and my answer would now be 3,690. To remember when your number gets bigger, think of your number line. If I go this way on my number line, my numbers get bigger. So when I multiply, I move in this direction. What happens when I divide by 10, 100, or 1,000? Now remember, when I multiplied, my numbers became bigger. When I divide, my numbers get smaller. This only applies when we are multiplying and dividing by whole numbers. So 27,000 multiplied by 10, 10 has got one zero. I'm going to add another zero. Remember to group your numbers in threes. So it's 270,000. When I multiply by 100, it's a decimal. My comma must move two places to the right. So my answer is going to be 420. When I multiply a decimal by 1,000, my comma is going to move three places to the right, and I'm going to get 472,501. When I divide, dividing numbers get smaller. Divide by 10, my comma moves one place to the left. So my answer is 0, 0, 0, 0,0069. Notice space between the third and the fourth digit. If I divide by 100, my comma is moving two places to the left. So if my comma was there, I would go one, I'd have to add another zero before I put my comma and a zero in front. If I divide by 1,000, my comma, my comma moves. There is no comma, so I can insert it at the back because if you say you are 16 years old, I can also say 16, comma, zero, zero. It hasn't made you any older. It's a silly way to write it, but we haven't changed the value of the number. So my comma moves one, two, three places, and my result is 69, comma, zero, zero, five. 
That's all for this section of work. Please ensure that you do activity two on page 20, numbers one and two, and exercise two also on page 20, numbers one to four. Thank you.